This isn't a headline from a sci-fi movie. Dire Wolves are back, for real. In a stunning announcement, Colossal Biosciences, a company devoted to de-extinction, revealed the birth of three dire wolf pups named Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi. These aren't just wolf puppies, they are genetically resurrected dire wolves, a species that had been extinct for roughly 12,500 years. This is groundbreaking news for wildlife enthusiasts and conservationists everywhere. Think about it, a creature from the Ice Age, famous from myths and pop culture, brought back to life in the modern world. Colossal's announcement marks the world's first successfully de-extinction animal, an achievement once confined to science fiction. The excitement is palpable. For many of us, dire wolves are almost mythical, known mainly from fantasy games and Game of Thrones. Now we have real, living dire wolf pups playing and howling in a secure sanctuary. Romulus and Remus, the two six-month-old males, already weigh around 80 pounds and are nearly four feet long. They can grow to six feet and 150 pounds as adults. Their sister, Khaleesi, is a fluffy two-month-old pup with snow-white fur. The pups romp and tussle like any young canids, but observers note their wariness and wild instincts. They shy away from strangers and howl together at siren-like sounds echoing an Ice Age howl that hasn't been heard for millennia. It's as if a ghost in the Pleistocene has come back to life, and the world is listening in awe. Bringing back a dire wolf wasn't as simple as breeding wolves. It was a high-tech genetic marvel. Researchers collected DNA from two fossilized dire wolves, a 13,000-year-old tooth and a 72,000-year-old bone. These precious DNA samples, extracted from tar-preserved and permafrost remains, held the genetic blueprint of the long-lost species. The team sequenced and assembled the dire wolf's genome and compared it to living canines. They identified about 20 key genetic differences. Using CRISPR gene editing, scientists rewrote these key genes in a gray wolf's DNA to match the dire wolf's DNA. This essentially recreated a dire wolf genome within a living cell. They edited existing wolf DNA to mimic the dire wolf genome. Once they had wolf cells carrying the dire wolf genes, they used cloning techniques to turn those cells into viable embryos. Dozens of embryos were engineered and implanted into surrogate mothers. Instead of using a gray wolf, which can be risky, they used large domestic dogs as surrogate moms, easier to work with and very capable of carrying wolf pups. It worked. Three pregnancies succeeded. Romulus and Remus were born first, in one surrogate each, and baby Khaleesi arrived a few months later, via a third surrogate. This entire process is history-making. Colossal CEO Ben Lamb likened the achievement to magic. Our team took DNA from a 13,000-year-old tooth and a 72,000-year-old skull and made healthy, dire wolf puppies. Indeed, seeing these pups is almost like watching science fiction become reality. It's important to note that this de-extinction didn't bring back some Jurassic Park monsters. Genetically, the pups are over 99.5 gray wolf, their closest living relative, with crucial tweaks that give them dire wolf characteristics. In other words, if it looks like a dire wolf, acts like a dire wolf, and can even have dire wolf pups, Colossal argues it is a dire wolf, reborn. Now that we have real dire wolf youngsters padding around, Let's step back for a moment. What exactly is a dire wolf, and what makes it special? Dire wolves, or Anasian dirus, aren't just fantasy creatures. They were very real Ice Age predators that lived alongside mammoths and saber-toothed cats. Despite the name, a dire wolf is not just a big gray wolf. It is a distinct species of wild dog that evolved in North America. Genetic research shows dire wolves split off from other canids nearly 5.7 million years ago, making them a distant cousin of today's wolves. So, how did a dire wolf differ from the gray wolves we know? For starters, dire wolves were bigger and bulkier. They averaged about 60 to 68 kilograms, or 130 to 150 pounds, roughly 25% heavier than a large gray wolf. They had massive skulls with stronger jaws and larger teeth, perfect for bringing down big game. Studies of bone show they were hypercarnivores. At least 70% of their diet was meat, mainly large herbivores like horses and bison. 
dire wolves were built for that role. Their limb bones suggest they were sturdy rather than built for extreme sprinting, implying they likely relied on strength and pack coordination to tackle prey. Dire wolves thrived during the Ice Age, but about 10 to 13,000 years ago, they vanished. The leading theories for their extinction include the changing climate at the end of the Ice Age, which altered habitats and reduced prey, and competition from other predators, like smaller but more adaptable gray wolves and humans. Unlike gray wolves, dire wolves seemingly did not interbreed with other canids like coyotes or wolves. They were truly the last of their lineage. When the last dire wolf died, that unique genetic line was lost. Until now. Now with Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi alive, we get a glimpse of that ancient animal in the flesh, which brings us to the big controversial question. Could these dire wolves ever live in the wild again? And should they? Bringing back an extinct species is one thing, releasing it into the wild is another challenge entirely. Right now, Colossal's three dire wolf pups are living a pampered life on a 2,000-acre protected reserve. They have spacious land to explore, but it's all fenced and closely monitored for safety. These founding pups were hand-raised and will likely stay under human care for their entire lives. However, being hand-reared also means they never learn to hunt from their parents. So, Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi won't be running free in Yellowstone anytime soon. But what about their offspring? or a large population of dire wolves in the future. Could those be returned to wild landscapes? In theory, a dire wolf can live anywhere a gray wolf can. They're close biologically, and dire wolves once ranged all over North and South America. They prefer open woodlands, plains, and tundra, where large prey roam. Think big. Places like the Great Plains, Rocky Mountains, or Canadian Wilderness could be candidates. Some enthusiasts even imagine a Pleistocene Park scenario similar to rewilding projects in Siberia, where resurrecting Ice Age animals like mammoths and dire wolves might coexist in a controlled reserve. More realistically, Colossal has hinted at working with indigenous groups to eventually release dire wolves into large ecological preserves. For example, tribal lands or remote reserves in places like the northern U.S. or Alaska could offer vast, secure territories. Their thick fur and size suggest they were cold-adapted, Yet, as adaptable as carnivores, they might handle a range of climates, much like modern wolves or dogs do. If needed, wildlife managers could start them in cooler regions and see how they fare. The key is finding areas with enough space and prey, and where introducing a top predator wouldn't cause conflicts with people or imperil existing species. Reintroducing dire wolves isn't just for spectacle. It comes with the idea that they could help ecosystems. Large wolves are apex predators. They sit at the top of the food chain and can shape the environment through what scientists call trophic cascades. We've seen this with gray wolves in Yellowstone. A dire wolf being even larger would likely prey on deer, elk, and wild pigs, or even feral horses in today's environment, potentially helping to manage those populations. They could also outcompete or push out invasive coyotes in some areas, possibly benefiting smaller fauna. In a balanced setting, dire wolves could restore a natural equilibrium, much as their ancestors did by culling the weak and sick megafauna. However, we must consider the flip side. What if dire wolves disrupt existing ecosystems? Modern ecosystems have changed since dire wolves left. Other predators have taken over, including humans. Gray wolves now occupy some of their old niches. Interestingly, Dire wolves and gray wolves historically did not overlap much in range. The two species might avoid each other or compete depending on food availability. If dire wolves were introduced, conservationists might choose areas where gray wolves are absent or scarce. For example, parts of the Great Plains or East Coast forests where wolves are gone but deer overpopulate. Also, unlike the Pleistocene, we no longer have mammoths, ground sloths, or camels wandering around as prey. Dire wolves might have to settle for smaller game at times, which could affect how they hunt. They might go after livestock if wild prey is insufficient, a big concern for human-wolf conflict. Any release program would need to ensure these wolves stay within protected areas and have plenty of natural prey to avoid clashes with ranchers or suburban areas. We've learned from modern wolf reintroductions that public support is crucial. 
Despite their ecological benefits, wolves can inspire fear and opposition. A genetically resurrected predator might face even greater public scrutiny. On the other hand, the novelty and fame of dire wolves could spark public fascination and funding for keeping them in reserves, akin to living natural wonders. For the first time, humans have undone the extinction of a large animal. The dire wolf's second act has only just begun, and it raises profound questions about our relationship with nature. Will we see packs of dire wolves hunting freely across wild prairies again? Or will they remain as carefully guarded ambassadors of a bygone era, living out their days in spacious sanctuaries? The answer depends on science, time, and society's willingness to embrace this bold form of conservation. What do you think? Should dire wolves be rewilded? Or is this a step too far? Would you want to hear their howls echo through the wild again? Let me know in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.